Zelensky signs bill allowing Ukraine to confiscate assets of Russia supporters. Here's a summary of the article. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky signed a law on sanctions related to assets of individuals supporting the Russian invasion, which was adopted by the Ukrainian parliament on May 12. The bill establishes a new type of sanction in the form of seizure for the state revenue of assets belonging to individuals, as well as assets they can directly or indirectly use, according to the president's official website. The procedure of identifying and confiscating assets of sanctioned persons who in one way or another support the aggression of the occupiers against Ukraine will allow us to quickly and effectively replenish the Ukrainian budget at the expense of our enemies, Zelensky's statement said. According to the document, the Justice Ministry will be responsible for the implementation of state policy in the field of recovery of state assets. It will identify and search for assets of individuals and legal entities following the decisions of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine. Administrative proceedings sanctioning the recovery of assets into state revenue will be conducted by the Supreme Anti-Corruption Court. Earlier in March, the Ukrainian parliament passed a law regulating the seizure of Russian property in Ukraine. In May, a decree was signed on the seizure of assets of Ukrainian subsidiaries of Russian bank Bank and the state corporation VEB. RF. U.S. President Joe Biden also proposed legislation allowing Washington to send funds seized from Russian oligarchs to support Ukraine. This post received a score of 15,000, with an upvote ratio of 94%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. Greater than the procedure of identifying and confiscating assets of sanctioned persons who in one way or another support the aggression of the occupiers against Ukraine will allow us to quickly and effectively replenish the Ukrainian budget at the expense of our enemies. Zelensky's statement said, not much to go off with regards to who is a sanctioned individual specifically. I kind of wish when they create draconian laws like this they'd have a sunset date. Personally I think almost all laws need a soft sunset date for the purpose of having to revise to clarify based on precedent. It sounds nice but, given that we have a society with laws, a lot of those laws are probably necessary. Congress can barely pass any laws as it is. Changes in administrations means everything is at stake all the time fuck fuck fuck. Repealing anti-corruption laws just means letting it expire silently. Congress has consistently only done 400 to 600 laws per term, with a total of about 30,000 since the U.S. began. Pick your favorite law. You'd have to campaign all over again for it. Screams in abortion rights even lack of planned sunsets doesn't protect established law. We need less apathy, and if the road to that is to force people to actively follow and participate in the fight for the rights they care about so be it. We need people to step up now. The biggest problem that isn't being touched on here is that Zelensky's government has already declared and enforces that any officials who even interact with Russia without their permission are traitors and helping Russia. This already got a massive amount of flack, as small town mayors who suddenly found themselves facing the Russian army and had no real choice but to negotiate were suddenly traitors. They were faced with the choice of trying to negotiate for food, water in exchange for free passage through the town, or the Russian army would force its way through anyway and kill the people these mayors were supposed to represent. If you were faced with futile defiance resulting in unnecessary death, or negotiating, which would you pick? This happens in any conflict. It is not simple. Because, negotiating, is not just agreeing to keep the electricity on for everyone and stop the bombing. It likely involves giving a list of names of good people who will likely be promptly killed as a direct result. The, lightest, thing that could happen to them is they get taken to a prison camp and the war ends before they die there. That's a high priority, non-negotiable item for the enemy and something that a decent civilian leader cannot do and remain morally intact. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.